Alright, hello everyone and welcome to the discussion. I'm your host in WWE Enthusiast Dougie Doug. In today's episode, I'm going to be discussing Friday Night Smackdown, December 1st, 2023 edition. We are officially in the month of December, the final month of the year 2023. And last weekend, WWE wrapped up its last main roster premium event of the year, that being Survivor Series. So now we start the road to the Royal Rumble with, um, with this episode of Smackdown here. Uh, Logan Paul making his return to SmackDown, uh, and also Randy Orton making his return to SmackDown as well. And with that, we'll go ahead and get right into the action. Starting with Butch versus Bobby Lashley. And Butch is a man all by himself, with the Rollin Brutes appearing to be no more. Ridge Holland nowhere to be found, and Sheamus, well, on the shelf with injury, but for some reason they won't acknowledge that. Or WWE won't. So, uh, Butch took on Bobby Lashley here, who was accompanied by the Street Profits, and that match went about as well as expected for uh, Butch. He was resilient, but the Almighty overwhelmed him with his strength and explosive offense and scored the whale of a spear that turned him inside out. Butch looked strong here, even in defeat, and the potential for a shooting character possibly back to the Pete Dunn persona is certainly there. For Lashley, this was a good win in his first match back in singles competition on Friday nights, even though I think we all know he's a top tier guy. <coughs> Logan Paul returns, followed by Kevin Owens versus Grayson Waller, and the main thing with Logan Paul's segment here was announcing a, return, a tournament to crown a number one contender for the US title, and that tournament starts next week. Two of the guys featured in that tournament are Kevin Owens and Grayson Waller, and based off the interaction between Owens and uh, Paul before the match, it's quite possible that Owens is the favorite, or I should say it makes Owens the favorite, I think that would make Owens the favorite to win this tournament. Um, <coughs> So yeah, after that segment with Owens and Paul that was interrupted by Waller and Theory, the advertised match got underway uh, with uh, th uh, Theory uh, interfering in the match and injuring Owens' hands, giving something for uh, Grayson Waller to work over for most, of the bout, for most of the bout. That was not enough though, as Owens would cut through the pain and score the win from out of nowhere. If you watched uh, Logan Paul a year ago, and then you watch uh, this segment here tonight, you'll see two different stages of comfort comfort uh, the second stage being uh, him being far more comfortable at this point and knowing who he is as a performer uh, he's great on the mic and can elevate the US title Owens was great here going to toe the toe going toe the toe ball on the mic and popping the crowd good segment uh, and good stuff from all of, all involved <coughs> Bianca Belair versus Kyrie Sane, and Bailey continued to dig herself a whole Friday interfering in late in Sane's match with Belair and inadvertently distracting her long enough for the SD to recover and score the win. It was already the first time that Belair and Sane did battle having competed against each other in the inaugural May Young Classic, and it demonstrates their solid, solid in chemistry. Unfortunately, the match was impacted by an ill-time commercial break that meant the majority of the battle occurred during, during it. Still, the story development Bailey costing her teammate the win will, uh, will be hugely significant moving forward, with the game ultimately being the demise of Bailey's role as leader of damage control. Granted that demise is already underway, but I think that became close and closer to her getting kicked out of damage control. We saw that at the beginning of the show where she was notably absent uh, when Damage Control made her way to the ring. And we saw that in backstage segments where Eo or Dakota would be speaking for the group. And Bailey, well, I think Bailey might be seeing the writing on the wall here. She might be, you know, trying to make some last ditch efforts to ensure she doesn't get kicked out, but it seems likely that she knows what might be happening. Um, and unfortunately here, Kyrie did take a loss there, you know, the whole thing that he's going to be building up Bel Air to be the next challenger for EO Sky, so can't ever take a loss here. And then in the main event, Randy Orton makes his choice and signs his contract, signing with SmackDown and setting his sights immediately on Roman Reigns. However, there could be some possible consequences for him after he RKO'd uh, Nick Aldis, um, and credit. There was a choice for Orton, you know, to sign the Brawler, to sign with SmackDown, but as, you know, as we all saw, he signed with SmackDown. Uh, but before he did, though, he threw hands with Solo Sago and Jimmy Uso, got in the system early night, um, 
Yeah, so fast paced segment that featured some great energy from Orton, a red hot crowd, and a moment that will have potential repercussions for Orton, especially if all this takes out LK Arrow personally, and if he does, how that effect how that will affect Orton's ability to get his hands on the bloodline bears watching. So in conclusion, the follow-up from Survivor Series was felt over the show, which featured high-profile developments such as Orton signing SmackDown, Bailey volunteered out her favorite damage control, and Paul's announcement of the U.S. title tournament. While there may not have been the excitement on the heels of CM Punk's return to Survivor Series that Raw had, it's thoroughly focused on st stories and stars that will play a big role in the coming weeks and months. It was a better follow-up show uh, than what Raw attempted, if nothing else. And with that, that will conclude this episode of WWE Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below.